inspected, everything passed. Uh, you just got a couple of things to change on this. Anyways, uh, she's clicking. She's never ever been dead before, so I've got our uh, our boost back out here. So we'll see if this starts it. Yeah, I can't I can't believe this is the first this is the first time this thing's ever ever been dead out of me. Everything looks normal in here. Red to red, black to black. Box will come on, 9.2 volts. I must have left something on. Oh, yikes. Oh yeah, that wasn't tight at all. I don't know if you see how that is. It's got all three wires going to each, like one to each battery. Huh. Maybe let's jump this from under the hood. to the starter maybe and this one should be ground click okay okay so that looks like it is maybe a ground terminal down here so sweet Okay, so why is this not charging? Oh, I heard the change there. The alternator kicked in, I bet. Yep, the alternator kicked in. I don't know why it wasn't charging there. That's funny. It's also never, ever, ever gone dead on me. I don't know what's going on there, uh, we'll figure that out. My booster pack starts and if I hook it right to the starter, and my starter's easy to get to, so that's not too bad. Anyways, let's let this build air and then work on it. Well, we need a tire to put on it. Here's my selection of spares. I like this one, and I like this one. That's got full of air. It's full of air. So you know what, I've got two tires on the truck that are questionable. I might actually just do both and then I'm fine for the season. Okay, I don't think I've ever showed you how to take these off, so... Triangles on? Yeehaw! Never had them shoot at me, but that was cool. There we go. one we're replacing because there's no more tread on that. We're gonna put this on the inside because it's got more tread. Hopefully I replace that one first. Nice.
the valve stems hitting inside here. Yeah, I just chalked the wheel. We're just gonna release the brakes so that I can spin that. See the street sweepers are out. So the thing is just to look down inside and just see if it's getting wider and smaller as it rotates around the gap. But this one looks perfect, so that wheel should be nice and straight. The way it sprung off before makes me believe it wasn't on straight, so I have high hopes that a vibration may have gone away. one side done let's do the same on the other side that should be this truck ready to go Got a couple things inside the cab again I want to do and test it out. Okay, we got an air filter for it. Okay, out with the old. In with the new. Nice soft seal. We don't even need to grease it. Mint. That's perfect. That's going to be a really good ground. Haha, <laughs> good enough. Is a good ground now. On the other end through the firewall. Okay. And that should help ground everything else to the body. Alrighty. So we have our wire. That gauge should, in theory, work properly now, so. Okay, so we're watching this gauge. And we're going to want to see it probably around 200 to 250 when we're idling here. But going down the road, I should be six, seven, eight hundred easily. And then upwards of a thousand when I'm pulling a hill. Where it was last time, it was floating around 300, maybe, maybe was hitting 400 in a couple of spots. But I knew for a fact it wasn't working. So let's see how this goes. Uh, so far, it's up over 200, which tells me it's probably working properly. So that's good. Fire is sitting just above 200, so I think it's still working. I thought it was working last time though, so we'll see.
Cool, so that's working great. The gauge is awesome. Um, I like to let it cool down to 300 before I shut it off, so everything else is ready. We're good to go to work with her. Did I break the ratchet? I broke the ratchet. Okay. Oh no, I didn't jump hard enough. I can't believe how tight this drain plug was. I think that might be a magnet too, which means, cool, it's a magnet, which means there was nothing on that. That's a good sign for my engine, cool. We're just going to take a take a dab of this silicone and just stick it on here because this the ceiling washer I would expect that to be much thicker, and uh, mine's not. That's not a perfect solution, but for now that'll do. Good enough. With any luck, it just cooperates like that. Awesome. I don't know what this is, but it's touching the filter too, and I don't like that. So once this is off, we'll deal with that. Just awesome. I'm gonna go grab gloves. plate is but it's touching my filter I just lubed up the o-ring on this guy some people want to over or sorry some people want to pre-fill these I never have <clears throat> all you need to do is hand tight on these they don't need to go crazy Good enough. Okay, cool. I got most of it. It doesn't take both full pails, so I can merge them at the end. over full for now but the filter's empty so let's start it up 
been quite a few weeks here too and my gasket's still holding on that so that's cool. Funnel out of here I guess. Oil pressure here. There it is. Now check the oil again. the bottom of the ad mark so that usually means it needs a gallon well I could use more right up to the full mark perfect Got grease nipples here. Hmm. It's like in between those sizes. Unless it broke off in there and I need to extract it. Maybe not. Well, it's taking it. Because that's doing weird, funky things, but not what I want. Got the extractors. Okay, so to make this fit, we gotta make the hole bigger. That's how important grease is. Half an hour to fix a grease spot. Grease nipple. Now if we could only get that to stay down. Now if we tack and tack and hammer. There we go.
You gotta get the gas going on this one. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Let it, let it simmer. Let it simmer. Give it a minute. Gotta let this one warm up. It's cold. Okay, now, now you're good. Just gotta let it warm up. Quite the mountainous range you got in here. Yeah, right? Three pucks. I got this airline in here that's uh, it's kind of ugly. It's got a bunch of wear marks on it there and it's starting to crack here. So I found this in my toolbox. So let's change this out. Cool. And that's unthreaded from there, but I've got a new, I've got a new fitting for that too. So we're all right. And this side over here. Oh, really? That's annoying. Oh. Wow, you're strong. Someone's welded two fittings together here to make that work. So I'm gonna replace it with something proper. Okay, so we got a new fitting. We got our thread sealant. A healthy amount of that on there. Cool. I'm seeing now that the fitting on the other end is different. That end there and this end here don't really match up at all. I got this other truck here. I'm just going to steal this fitting out of. Um, hopefully it fits. Hopefully I have an adapter if it doesn't. <clears throat> Ow. So I need an adapter to make this one bigger. I need it to go to this size. So hopefully I have an adapter in here. I don't see one. Well, I think I got lucky. I was cruising my drawers and I found this. We'll see if the line thread's onto it. It's just a bit different. Darn. I searched the entire farm and I found an adapter. So we're good to go. Thread tape this bad boy. Cool. 
more thread splooge. We're gonna find a way to fasten this. Now this end doesn't need thread tape because if you look in here, it's got this uh, bulb looking piece in the fitting. So that just seals up in the crevice of this fitting. And that's all she wrote. Oh. It's kind of the day long weekend, everything's closed. My options are very limited on what I can do here. We'll do a couple of wraps in a different spot here too. This old girl gets driven on rough roads. I don't like things falling off. That's not going to hit on anything. I think we're good. And if your zap straps aren't long enough, you can uh, yeah, you can just loop them together like that. Yeah. Now you've got a really long zap strip. I like that better. We got a good fix. I noticed this arm here is uh, pretty loose, so I'm gonna have to order a new one. So one thing we got to do often is checking the amount of pull between here and the brake drum when the brakes are not applied. So right now, because the park brake's on, these are sprung, the brakes are tight. So what I'm gonna do is go release the brakes after chalking the wheel, and we're gonna measure how much this moves. And then with this wrench, we can adjust the amount of play. So the truck's not gonna move now, hopefully, because I've got it chalked there. It won't move. And I'm sure you watch this pull in. So what we wanna do, and this is kinda here to do the same thing. What we wanna do is stick this in here. And there's a little bit of play in there, which isn't the best. We should be doing these pins soon, or these bushings. And then we're gonna push this as hard as we can. It's not the easiest. Oh yeah, now I got about half an inch there, so that's okay. Check this other side here. So that one moves a lot. See how much movement that has? And then I can tighten this brake. So that's tight now, I shouldn't have any play in it. So now, if I remember right, I want like three quarters of a turn. There's half. There's three quarters. Let's see what that gives us. Whoa. Okay, that's too much. <laughs> so maybe it's maybe it's all the way tight and then a quarter turn. And then you just want to make sure you turn this so this little spring thing comes out. But that was that was a quarter turn, so let's see where that puts us. Okay. Okay, so that's what we want. We want tight and then a quarter turn. Like I said, make sure this is... Make sure that's where it's happy. One last check. Half to three quarters of an inch. Perfect. Now let's go to the back. So these ones I can kind of get from the top here. Same thing, way too much stroke on that one. Oh, same as before, we're just gonna tighten it all the way. And I've got our half inch.
I've got a lot of this stuck in my box and it's uh, it's quite heavy. So I'm hoping it hoping it chips away easy. You turned off but I got uh, I got that load spread that I dumped with the dump truck anyways we're looking at the AC I've got it on up there it's not blowing super cold but it is spinning so let's put the gauge on here and see what's going on the gauge so that'll tell us how many how many pounds of pressure is in the system So it's reading a 10. I want it up in here, I think. So I'm gonna put a two, I'm gonna put a bottle in. Just put a little more in it. This line's not super cold, so. And we have ice cold in here again. Cool. Nice. Holy. We got, uh, we got down this dirt road here. She is steep. Woo-wee. Right at the very, very, very end, the lady doesn't like filming cameras and stuff, so I didn't get down near her house, but this would just be awesome, living right at the end of the road, no neighbors. Oh man, I'm a little jealous. I love this, I love this little tree formation thing too. I might want to do one of those at home. We'll see. Now look at this. This is, this is the end of our driveway. It's the main road they've put in. Just pretty much access for the power lines. And it's just down this super, super narrow 
um, little goat trail, quad trail sort of thing. Not a lot of room for error on this. We're running the, running the edge on both sides and this drops off. That drops off. Oh, there's a fence down there. Another little driveway. Oh yeah. Cool. Someone's building things. It's funny this guy doesn't really have a, a road off back here, but he definitely could if he wanted to. Sure looks nice. Beautiful view to compliment their new house. Pretty cool to see some nicely landscaped places around here. Most look like that. Some people are starting to give a rats about what they want to see in their yards and everything. So that's cool. Today I'm working for this pit directly. Um, I don't know what I'm back here to load, so we're gonna find out that in a minute here. I'll just see where the loader guy wants me and uh, then we'll go from there, get loaded. Cool, we're all loaded up, heading back out. Lots of room for us both, fella, keep coming. You might wanna talk for a minute. Cruising along, come to a gate. Just got another load on for uh, for these people. So all part of trucking, I guess. GoPro but when we go up little hills like that you can't see in front of the truck at all um, yeah it's worse in person when the GoPro shows it just a little cabin at the end of the middle of nowhere anything on there. This would be so cool to have a personal driveway this long. It's like 900 meters long. 800, 900 meters. Yeah, it's got to be half a mile. It's a big driveway. Not a lot of room for air in a big truck like this. I'm all of eight feet wide and these roads are usually only about 10. It gives me a foot on each side past the mirrors. But when you're trying to take corners, you gotta swing wide a little bit. You end up rubbing trees. Which 
might be a warm one out today. It's starting to get hot in here. I worked all yesterday, I didn't get hot once. Sun's beating down, smoke in the air from some fires up north. Oh, look, there's a gross in the road. Those things are so dumb. You could damn near walk up and pick those things up with your bare hands. And here's the roadway. Cool, look at that. Comes in off the road, splits into two driveways. Little staging area down here for big stuff. Oh, that was cool. Hopefully it was on camera. That was a player's slingshot that just, just went by. I used to sell those. There's 8, 10, 12 pound rainbow trout all throughout this lake. So that's pretty cool. All man-made and I believe he did it with this thing. This is an old, uh, an old cable powered, um, oh, dredge. Yeah, dredge. Whatever. If I'm mistaken on that being a dredge, someone can correct me. Big bucket lays on one end and it pulls it all the way through the lake with the uh, with the cables and stuff, and that's what does the digging. Good way to get deep without having to crawl down steep banks and stuff. You just sit at the top here, throw it over, pull your material out, dump it somewhere. Pretty cool. Big old dozer up here too. I don't know what it was for with the big cable attachment on the front. If that was supposed to be a cable lift blade, maybe. Yeah, it looks like a cable lift blade. Unless there's cylinders on it, which I will see in the video and I will either look like an idiot or not. <laughs> cool old A-model Kenworth. Hopefully you can see it pretty clearly on the right of this pickup. There's a great big jaw crusher there. I want, I want that. I don't know if it'd sell it, but that's a great big jaw crusher. And there's some more little things. A whole bunch of engines and Detroits and two-stroke diesel. Yeah, big things around here. That's how we dump. Okay, I've got a leaky sound coming and I don't know where from. That's 
that's not a good sound. Ah, it's this one. Cool, I definitely, you definitely have a leak. Let's try to find a tire for that thing. If plugging it's gonna be a pain, it's gonna be way easier just to stick one of these on it. If there's uh, any with tread, they're all mediocre. <laughs> What's this one like? It's full. Got a little bit of tread. <clears throat> well, better than the one that's on it. You can still hear it. For sure. Looks like I might just sink a plug into it actually. Let's see how lucky we are. Oh, you hear that? There's something in there. Is either going to be a nail or a rock. You can see a little bit of shiny stuff in there. Holy! Got it. Just a little extra silicone for, for good luck. <clears throat> okay, I'd love for you to go all the way in. There we go. I usually pull that tight and wrap it around something and then it stays. I don't have to sit here and keep constant pressure on that. All for that little thing. Looks like it probably was a nail. So we'll let that air up and get back to work. I don't hear any leaks out of my plug. I usually just trim these off so they don't get caught on the road and rip back out. Any little bit of that right stuff silicone should do its job by the time we get going here.
That stuff's amazing. It seals in like five minutes or less, so. Should hold back 100 and some odd PSI, right? <laughs> That's what I thought happened. These rocks will actually drill right through your tire if you don't pick them out. Time for some new tires here anyways. Okay, I uh, didn't want to show me spitting on it, but I spat on it. It's not leaking at all, so. I'll just wait for this to finish airing up and head to work. Ninety, we're getting there. I'd like to go to a hundred on them all. Getting close now, though. Maybe this tire was low for a while, and that's why I had that shake. <laughs> I wish. Close enough to 100. Get back on. And we're off. All right, and we're off officially. Nothing coming. Steering, shifting, GoPro, and all at the same time. One and a half minutes down the street and it's bone dry. I went past here an hour ago and it was bone dry. When did this roll through? <laughs> it's bone dry at my place. I got two tiny little sprinkles. I don't even see a rainstorm. Maybe that over there. Ah, beats me. Neat. Uh, a minute more later and it's it's raining a little bit, but I don't see the cloud. It, it's nice and blue sky out here. I don't get it. But it's definitely wet here. Huh. There we got our load on. Hopefully you can see that. We're going way out if anyone wants to Google it. It's called Egan Lake. It's in the Bonaparte Plateau of the Caribou region of BC. Big can of the proud around here with our cows. Look at these guys. Moo! Moo cows! Ha, one hiding in the thing there. Lots of cows out this way. We just cruise along, we're doing 30, 35 kilometers an hour, which is just under, or sorry, just over 20 mile an hour. Floating along in the rough zone. No cell service. Nothing but our thoughts out here. I'm lying, I got music, but... Some of these can be violent. What's that running? Some just, some just took off into there. Oh, there he is. Brown squirrel. Hopefully there's lots of wildlife out here.
runoff here. I don't want to drive down there and find out there's no room for both of us. Um, it's a big driveway. I'm going to come down here. Looks like lots of room. I think if there wasn't, he would have waited. For the future, build a, a, a log wall. I love the looks of that. Dusty stuff. This is clear three quarter inch crush we're hauling. This is for topping the guy's driveway. So I'm gonna assume I just dump in the same spot. Wait for him to get out of the way. So what do I do down here? I'll show you guys. This releases my, my gate. So that releases the back end. This puts my PTO in. Make sure we're not in gear. I've got that back and this back for my high lift. And for that, I just let the clutch out so everything's engaged. Now we get that out of the way, and I can dump my box. Now inside, I just turn that off. We drive forward a little. Put the box down. Turn around and bounce out of here. Cool, so that was pretty much an hour on the nose from the time we turned onto the dirt road to here. Road washed out in a couple of spots. Which tells me, because this is a new culvert, this culvert wasn't big enough originally. That's nice to listen to all the way home. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, these, uh, these gauges I put in are working wonderfully, Boost. Now you can see it's like, there we have Boost and Pyro. They're, they're both doing their job. They're showing me the temperature of the exhaust and the pressure in the intake. Both very important things when you got a big diesel.
Now, I got pulled over by the DOT today. I was overweight by about a thousand kilograms, a couple thousand pounds. And I looked in here and uh, got all this stuff stuck, but underneath my plywood, it looks really thick up here. And I can't help but think that maybe, just maybe, there's a whole bunch of stuff under there. The length of that, width of that. Making it too heavy. Well, that's a hundred pounds at least. There's definitely some weight in there. Okay, well that just took me like 45 minutes less than I thought it would. Let's go dump this. Okay, I think I think that should help. There's only a little bit under there now, but it held in quite a bit of dirt. You saw what dumped, so. I don't know if that was 1,100 pounds worth or 1,100 kgs worth, but we'll see. So yeah, there's, there's just a little bit of stuff under there. Not too bad. I'll probably just leave it. It'll fall out naturally, I think. I tell you what, the season of autumn is rolling in quick. Just in the last week, all of our trees have turned yellow. I'm on a highway demolition job today. We're going down about a 45 minutes, half hour drive. Down to what's called Green Lake. It's a pretty little uh, sort of a destination retreat for, for the caribou. There's not many swimming lakes around here and it's actually pretty nice. It gets warm. And, there's some nice mountain views in the distance there and stuff, so. Just cruising around. End of the season's coming, but I wish it won't. Keep my shop up yet. Not the smoothest road in the world. We're loaded up with some demolition land construction crap in the box. But uh, yeah, you can see the mountains way in the distance there. It is pretty and kind of cool. The mountains are only about a 45 minute drive and you're right up inside them. Boss Gag's closing out that set. Up next, it's time for a vibe. And that vibe is one hit wonder starring with Hoover Stank. Leaves are falling. That's why they call it fall, I guess, eh? Hey? Oh. You know you're going the right way when you're passing dump trucks on the way to the dump. Abbey contracting, that's new. And here's the road to the dump. We're down to 30 kilometers an hour. Okay? And up there. Okay. You might be lucky if these guys might be up there. Oh, we stop and wait. Look at this dozer on the left here. This thing's freaking cool. Got the big steel tires or steel uh, rims on it with the nubs, so that'll never go flat. Running over anything. Look at that. 14 right around the corner. Funny they warned me about that lady too, that she was always in a bad mood and grumpy. She was quite pleasant. And look at that, she said the guys might be over there in a white pickup and some equipment. There's a white pickup and some equipment.
looking awesome. I never get help. See him over there in the mirror. Oh, and of course he's fighting with it. That's awesome. Okay, well that was my best dump experience yet. The lady at the front was easy to deal with. So far, I don't know how it's been back through, but that guy was super easy to deal with. It's amazing their method for dealing with this kind of garbage. There's, there's everything and anything you can imagine in this, from household to clothes and mattresses and pots and pans and chairs and it's all just mixed in with the dirt and buried. There's got to be a better way to deal with stuff. Well, that's good. They got the concrete figured out. This on the right here, that pile, that's the concrete crush that they put down on the road. And there's a whole bunch of rebar and wire sticking out of that pile, so it's amazing to me that there's no rebar in the road, unless there is. I'm leaving here with flat tires again. That's not uncommon. This is right where my uh, where my dad was broke down. He came around the corner like this, hit those, and parked right here. He had just enough momentum for it to stumble over and die, and I think he backed it up a little bit. This looks like it could be cool. Oh yeah. Little 40 dump truck. If you try to do 20 and 30, it's horrendous if you power through it. Um, I'm now doing 60. And I'm, I'm skipping over it. I know the road well enough to slide over the whole thing, but yeah, keep it above 40, 45, and it's better. <laughs> cool. Really nice job for me today. I get to drive, drive out here with uh, demolition waste, which is incredibly light. And then I get to follow up the day by driving, driving back south here with, uh, with no weight on home. It's super light. Nice to climb this hell empty though. This guy ripping down the tracks. That's kind of cool. Oh, I gotta figure out this hop right at 50. It just bounce, 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 bounce. It's gotta be a tire. Number two. Hopefully that was cool for you getting to watch it load. I just wanted to get out of his way a little bit, get the get the tarp here. <coughs> Feels a little heavier this time, it's all wood.
Okay, this is how I'm going to judge it. We'll see how far the other truck is behind me. And if he's if he's close, then I did a really good speed. If he's way down the road here, I went way too fast, and I can slow down and relax and not beat on my truck so hard on that road. Well, here he is. He was like five minutes down the road, so I guess I'm going a good pace. He waved that time. I guess he doesn't hate me. <laughs> People pass. And load of the day. I get to come back tomorrow. That's cool. steel rims on them with the pokey so everything gets compacted and nothing can get stuck. A little bit stuck up in there. stuck right in there. And we're out. That was nice of Buddy to help me there. He's not paid to jump in my crap. Good old caribou up here, man. Everyone just helps each other. It's nice. See a man in need, you help him. So we're back home here and uh, I've had a look. I'm pretty sure it's those bolts sticking out on the inside. Look, look at this. That was, that was mangled on the way with something coming out. So what I'm gonna do is just hold these from the outside. Where's one? I'm just gonna hold these like this and tack weld them right here just so they stick out like that. 